Yes, what you're looking at is a Hyundai Starix, and yes, he wants more power, and yes, we can easily remap the Starix. Um, a bit of a caveat. There's two kinds of Starix that are sold here in the Philippines. One is we, we call the, the Starix TCI and the Starix CRDI. If you happen to have the Starix TCI, I'm sorry to say there is nothing that can be done for that car. Since absolutely nothing. Now, sort of an exhaust, but it's a family van, so not a lot. We've only had one person who did that, put an three-inch exhaust on a static because he simply just wants more power. And we got about 10 horses more, which is not so bad. But for the CRDI ones, we're able to remap this. Actually, we're one of the first ones to tune this way back when it came out in 2008 because we had one. So back then, there was still no remap yet. We put a unit chip on it. We got about 30 to 35 horses. But with remapping the CRDI, now we should get a minimum of around 35 to about 50 horses for this one and aside from the power which a lot of people ask why in the hell do you want to make more power on a family van well very simple how much stuff do you carry in this van it's, i'm pretty sure it's you the wife two kids two yayas two strollers and all your luggages all of that in case you have forgotten has weight it's a lot of weight your entire family plus your luggage pretty much equals a small car already well, not really a small car. Probably about 500, no more. It should be about 500, 600 pounds worth. That's a lot of weight. So more power is not a bad thing for a van like this and a people carrier. And the other thing is, most likely you guys are using this for long trips, and going north, going south. After remapping, you should also see pretty good, much better fuel economy. In the city, it's almost. 8 to 10 percent better on the highway we anecdotally have customers tell us we get two three sometimes four kilometers per liter more depending on where they're going so that in itself is already a good and big deal enough for you to have your family van remap so we're going to show you the process and how it's done and of course there'll be a dyno before and after to see how much power we actually make that was a bit cool, dog. Oh. Alright, now what we're doing is we're reading the ECU file. Well, actually, the contents of the ECU of the Starex. So, this is the software that we're using. It's connected using a USB. Well, everything's USB now, connected to the OBD2 port of the car. And it's identifying the ECU. So that means it's trying to talk to the car's ECU, see if they talk to each other. If they do, then we can proceed with the downloading. Uh, there you go. So that's basically what the information is. We have hardware number, software number. So it says proceed with reading, and then we click OK. And there's a few procedures like ignition on, ignition off. Uh, some cars have it, some cars don't. A bit finicky actually to do are the European cars and Mazda. There's like several turn on, turn off, turn on, turn off. <laughs> uh, now, now it's reading the ECU. So there, the status bar down there it says one percent. So we have to wait for that to become a hundred percent down there. So that status bar down there as so well. So now it reached two percent, so we just have to wait for it to become hundred percent. So this will take probably about ten minutes. Uh, now for a little segue, because there are still some people who message us and ask, "What is remap and what does it do to the car?" The short answer is: add horsepower, add torque, minus delay, minus fuel consumption. So this in a nutshell is what remap is. We get more power, more torque. The delay that every one of you seems to be complaining about will be gone. And your fuel consumption will be about eight to 10% better. For those of you who could not understand English, there. <laughs> so if you're doing eight kilometers per liter before. Now you'll do probably 8.8, .8, maybe nine kilometers per liter. 
I don't know how much more clear I can make that. And what exactly the process that happens is, well, like you saw a while ago, step one is that we have a laptop. This laptop is connected, well, this is the USB to the laptop. There is a specialized plug here. It's actually called the OBD card has this. And that is almost always found Airphone, here's one here, your dash here. Every car has an OBD port that's found somewhere here underneath the dash. That's standard. It's just like a cell phone. Every cell phone has a cellular chip, obviously. And every cell phone has a mic, every cell phone has a speaker. Every cell phone has a screen, has volume buttons, has power on off. That's standard in any card. You have the OBD2 port. That's mandated by law, actually. <laughs> you can blame, well, don't exactly blame America because it makes our lives a lot easier. So this is plugged into there. And what we're doing is we're reading. That's a chip. That's what an ECU looks like. So we're reading the contents of the ECU and it goes into the laptop. Then once we have that file, so let's say this one's a static, so... For all the computer doors out there, you know what hex, what that means. Oh, actually it's not the point hex. So if you actually have studied computer science, you will know what this means. It means binary. And just like any other file out there, let's say point... You guys should know this already by heart. <laughs> you need a specialized program to open this. It's no different with this kind of file here. We have a software that can open it and that can edit it and change the parameters inside. Usually it's a bunch, it's not usually, but always, always it's just a bunch of numbers that we change. And then once we have that, we save it as this is our stock file our modified file so this is all saved in one folder in our laptop and this file is what we write back into the ECU to get more performance so that in a nutshell is what remapping is